What is up, everybody? It's Dr. Dale, the author of Pre-Med Mondays and the author of How to Raise a Doctor. Both books available on Amazon.com, so grab a copy. And you are listening to the Pre-Med Mondays Mentoring Podcast. This week, we're going to be talking about five ways to stay mentally and physically healthy as a pre-medical student. Check it out. Happy, happy Monday, Pre-Med Star. It is going to be a great week. If you have any doubt about that, go ahead and throw that doubt out of your brain right now and be pumped, be happy, be energetic, and tell yourself you're going to take this week on better than any week you've ever taken on before. So this week, we're going to be talking about five ways to stay mentally and physically healthy as a pre-medical student, mentally and physically healthy as a pre-medical student. Obviously, you guys know that being a pre-med is not easy. It's difficult. It's stressful. You have to do everything right and you might not get that score on that test you want. If you don't get that score on that test you want, you might not do well on your MCAT. Then you might not get into medical school. Then you might not become a doctor. Then the life's not going to be what you want it to be. There's a whole lot of stress, which is probably unnecessary stress, but that's the pressure you feel as though you have as a pre-medical student. And that can wear you down. That leads to a lot of things that deal with depression and things of that sort. You know, something that I'm very proud of the medical workforce for is the fact that we're starting to pay a lot more attention to well-being of physicians. And you guys probably saw in Pre-Med Star, there was a post here just a few days ago about physician suicide and things of that sort. These are real problems. These are things that a lot of times we kind of turn the blind eye from, but these things happen. And it's important that you learn how to start taking care of yourself while you're a pre-medical student, because the habits that you form as a pre-med are going to be the habits that you have as a medical student, which will be the same habits that you have during residency. And honestly, your residency and your fellowship training likely will be the most difficult part of your, your career. When you get done with all that stuff, when you're a faculty, when you're an attending, you, you more or less get to kind of choose what you want to do. If your job is too stressful, hey, just take a step away from it, work less hours, see less patients, you get paid less, but you, have, you get to make that choice. When you're a resident physician, you still get to make the choice. You can always walk away from your residency, but most people aren't willing to do that. So when you're a resident physician, 80-hour work weeks, you know, not getting very much sleep, being on call, being pimped out by your attendings. And when we say pimped out, we don't mean like somebody in the corner. In medicine, when we say the word pimp, we mean your attendings or your upper levels ask you a whole lot of questions and keep on drilling you, trying to make sure you know the answer to these medical-related questions as a way of, um, you know, kind of testing you. What it should be is to help you get better, but a lot of times it turns into them just trying to ask you questions until you you break, you know, some people do it in a malignant way. Some people do it in the edifying way. So all those things are stressful. And if you want to be able to deal with that residency life, it's very good to start learning how to deal with these stressors now as a pre-medical student and know how to stay mentally healthy and physically healthy. So we're going to go into week number eight here in Pre-Med Mondays. Let me grab a copy of my book. All right. You guys remember Pre-Med Mondays, we go through the book every week. So just grab a copy of your book. And in a few weeks, again, I'll probably be doing another free giveaway on um, Kindle. So be ready for that. Just be looking out for that. Probably do it like a back to school giveaway. As you guys are going back to school, those of you who didn't have a chance to grab a free copy on Kindle will have that opportunity. And we'll do this every so many months just to make sure you guys will have an opportunity to grab this book. All right. Five ways to stay mentally and physically healthy as a pre-medical student. So the first one is to have a study plan, have a study plan. And that might sound kind of strange. You say, well, we're talking about physically, mentally healthy study plan that that deals with something else that deals with academics. Well, if you think about it as a pre-medical student, your main focus essentially is to get good grades and to do all the other things, right? The extracurriculars and so on. Right. But a big part of your focus is to get good grades. So that's probably going to be your biggest stressor while you're in college is, hey, how do I get good grades at college or post-college if you're if you're. Uh, quote unquote, non-traditional student, whatever that means. Nowadays, it seems like everybody's a non-traditional student. So we need to probably find a better term for that. But that's what you're focusing on, getting good grades. So the thing that's going to stress you is, is how do I get these grades? And actually right now, a lot of you on Pre-Med Star will know I just sent out a survey trying to get your feedback because we want to make sure we're building the best products possible to help you all get into medical school. And a lot of the feedback we're actually getting from you guys deals with these stressors about, hey, I'm trying to figure out how to balance all these things. And essentially what it comes down to is planning. So that's why for this first point, we talk about have a study plan, have a study plan. The reason you want to do that is because if you're strategic about this, it can really ease the stress. It can ease your study stress. So if you say, I know this is how I'm going to study. I'm going to pre-read. I'm going to go to class, take these notes. I'm going to study by myself. Then I'm going to go to my study group and you know, blah, blah, blah. You have an outline detailed study plan. Then you don't have to just wing the studying thing. Then you don't have to 
just kind of be freaking out like, oh, what do I study next? How do I study? Because a lot of students and the more mentoring I do over the years, and I've been doing this for quite some time now, I realize a lot of students don't know how to study. And because they don't know how to study, that adds on crazy amounts of stress, right? If you're not studying right, you're not going to get the grades you want. If you're not getting those grades you want, then you're going to be freaked out and on panic mode all the time. Whereas if you have a strong study plan, that strong study plan helps you get excellent grades. And when you get excellent grades, you know, you're on cruise control. It's just a system. It's a process. What you do is you build a process. You figure out, okay, what works? And you figure that out by asking other people who've done it, asking other people who know what works, who've done the things to help them get straight A's or do different things to help them get those grades that they were looking for. And you make your process, your process is sending them, I'm using for your plan. You make your process. And then like business people often say, trust the process. After you make the process, you trust the process and you stick with that plan. I heard somebody say this yesterday. I forgot who, who I heard say it, but somebody said, plan the work, then work the plan, right? So you plan the work you're going to do. You plan your studying and then you work out your plan. Then you actually do according to the plan. So plan the work, then work the plan. That's the way it should be. So that's step one is to have a study plan. That will take so much stress off of you and that'll clear your mind up to do things that you want to do and to help you perform at the next level. Step two is eat a healthy diet. Eat a healthy diet. Now, I'm not, I'm not your mom or your dad wagging my finger at you and telling you what to eat, what not to eat, but you want to eat a healthy diet. And I tell you, I failed at this in college. I definitely did not eat a healthy diet. My wife and I always reminisced in our college days, and I went to the University of Missouri, and when I was there, there was a, a thing called Rollins, I think it's called Rollins to Go or something like that. That was the dining hall there. And we'd always go get these big pizzas, and I would always get two cherry cokes, and, and it makes you sluggish. You know, you guys know this, right? When you eat all that junk food, it makes you sluggish. And the other thing is the freshman 15 is real. You get to college, you start eating all that cafeteria dorm food, all you can eat, all this good stuff. That freshman 15 is real. And it's no secret that if you're eating a poor diet, if you're eating so many carbs, it's draining on your body. It fatigues you, slows down your brain. Your, your brain juices aren't pumping as well. So if you're not eating a healthy diet, it's really going to slow you down. It's going to mess up your mental status. It's going to mess up your ability to perform. You're going to get heavier. That's not a habit you want to pick up at a young age because that habit will stick to you. Next thing, next thing you know, you're going to be seeing your doctor for uncontrollable diabetes, heart disease, and all sorts of other healthcare problems. So you want to get into this habit of eating a healthy diet now because that's going to relieve so much stress that could come down the line, right? Number three is you want to exercise at least three times a week. Exercise at least three times a week. Obviously, this kind of goes with the whole idea of eating a healthy diet and being healthy. But exercising, it's, it's a real effect. When you go out there, when you're exercising, when your heart is pumping all this blood to your brain, your catecholamines, your endorphins, you know, you're, you have this adrenergic surge. It just makes you feel better. And when I get to work, First thing I do before I start rounding is I get on the ground, boom, and I crank out 20 to 50 push-ups, depending on what I feel. I just crank out the push-ups, boom, boom, boom. The reason I do it is because it gets the blood flowing, gets me pumped, gives me that rush, makes you feel good. So when you're doing that exercise, and that's, that's getting that, those endorphins going, it's going to make you feel good and ready to study when you're done exercising. And I probably don't need to tell you guys this. You guys know after you exercise, you feel better. You just do. A lot of the world's best businessmen and women, what do they do when they wake up? First thing they do is they go to the gym and they exercise because that gets them ready for the day. And they even wake up early just so they can beat everybody else to the gym. So these guys will be at the gym at 4, 30, 5 o'clock in the morning getting their workout in because it prepares them for the rest of the day. And the second thing about exercising at least three times a week, if you do it in a communal setting, you get to network and meet people and just kind of relax. That was one of my favorite things to do in college. I played a lot of basketball, so I would go to the basketball probably five, six days a week and I would go to the gym and play ball. And first of all, I get to do my exercise. I'll do the weights and all that stuff. So I get to talk with people there. But then I'm playing ball in between the games. I was doing sitting down, chatting, having a good time. So relaxing. Definitely kept me healthy. Definitely helped me get through the pre-med journey. Number four is read a book that has nothing to do with your coursework. Know what you like to read. Have your genre and make time to actually do it. Make time to actually do it, okay? You want to say, hey, I like these types of books. I'm going to try to get through one book a month. That might be a lot. I get it. You're in college. You're studying. So even if I'm going to try to get through one book a semester, just take 10, 15 minutes every night to read something for pleasure. When we were in college, my wife, she loved certain magazines. So she would always be reading these magazines. So figure out what it is that you like. Take the time and, and read it. I make sure every day I do my best to take time to read. On the way to work, I do audio books. On the way home, I usually do audio books or a sermon. And during my lunch breaks, I often try to keep a book on me. So while I'm eating, I could have a quick little read just to kind of free my mind up. And number five, don't be surprised, but number five is it's okay to party. 
it is okay to party, all right? People get this idea of, oh, you're pre-med, you can't party, you can't have fun. That's nonsense. There's absolutely nothing wrong with having fun. As long as your grades are in order, I'm going to start there. As long as your grades are in order, party all you want. As long as you're partying in a, in a wise manner, as long as you're not going out there and doing anything foolish. I will tell you that when I was in college, I didn't go to a, a party for my whole entire first semester. And that was a promise, a contract I made to myself. I said, my first semester, I'm getting the grades. After I proved to myself I'm getting the grades, then I can party. So my first semester in college, I didn't go to a single party. But from then on out, as college progressed, I went to more and more had some fun, had a good time. We weren't doing anything crazy, just going out with our friends and hanging out, enjoying being, you know, 18, 19, 20, 21, whatever. And we had a good time. But it was responsible partying, and I only did it if I knew I could get the grades that I needed, right? Don't go out there partying the night before your MCAT or do anything crazy like that. You have to be responsible with it. So those are key. And I'm sure there's plenty more. If you guys can think of anything else that you do that works for you as a pre-medical student that helps you stay mentally and physically healthy, Post it on pre Star. I'd like to know. I'd like to know your thoughts. I'd like to know what you think. I'd like to know what's working for you so we can share it and just share with other people in the community so they can say, hey, well, that worked for such and such. Maybe it'll work for me. Very important that we support each other in this manner because this is going to be a lifelong journey with you and your future colleagues. So if you're healthy, it makes your job easier as well. I'm telling you that now, right? When your colleagues are healthy, you're not, you're not always covering for them and things of that sort. It makes your job a lot easier as well. So those are the five things that you should be considering to stay healthy as a pre-medical student, both physically and mentally. And let me go back to my book here. And I'm going to figure out what this week's challenge is. So this week's challenge is schedule a time to work out with your accountability buddy. Excellent. Very easy and simple one. So all of you guys should have an accountability buddy. You should have done that back on week one of pre-med Mondays. So schedule a time to work out with your accountability buddy. And I know some of you guys have actually found accountability buddies on pre-med star. So if your accountability buddy is far away, you don't have to physically go work out with them, but just say, hey, I'm going to work out this day. And you guys just both be accountable to each other to make sure the other person actually takes time to work out at least once this week. OK, so do that and, you know, start off once a week, then twice a week and just build yourself up into a regular schedule of working out. Next week, we will be talking about. Just close my book. Let me open it back up again. So next week will be week nine in Pre-Med Mondays, and we'll be talking about vision and personal development. And I am so big on vision, so big on vision, where there's no vision that people perish. So you have to have a vision to be successful in life. So we're going to spend some time next week talking about how to get a vision and focusing on how you as a pre-medical student need to have a vision for your future in order to be successful. You got to have a vision or you will not be successful. I'm going to tell you that now. All right. So it's a wrap, guys. Remember to subscribe to the Pre-Med Mondays podcast on iTunes or Google Play. Or I know some of you guys are listening on SoundCloud or Stitcher. So whatever you use, make sure you click that subscribe button so you don't miss any episodes and share it with your friends. The more people hear this, the more it grows, the more people we get to help. And I would certainly appreciate that on a personal level, right? You guys know where to find me. I'm on premedstar.com. Join, connect with me, send me a message. I'm there to answer your questions and help you become a future physician. Love you guys, and I'll see you next week. Bye.